It's time to check in on the livestock markets with our livestock marketing specialist, Dr. Daryl Peel. And Daryl, you're here at the Rural Econ Conference. So what are you talking about today? Well, the question posed to me today is the same one I've been doing at a lot of meetings recently, and that is sort of where are we at on herd rebuilding? Uh, and, you know, are we started that process? Where we go from here, basically? Uh, so where are we going from here? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. If you look at the data right now, I have no indication that we have yet started herd re rebuilding. In fact, on an annual basis, the beef cow herd is getting smaller in 2023. Uh, so we'll start 2024, maybe at the lowest level, depending on what happens next year. Uh, and maybe we'll begin that herd rebuilding process, which means that we would pull a lot of females, heifers, out of the feeder supply and into the breeding uh, part of the invent, invent, uh, industry. Excuse me. So do you think that, that that's primarily due to drought or are there other factors that are going in with that? You know, there's a whole list of reasons why this herd rebuilding is slow to start. I think it will continue to be slow. Part of it is drought. Part of it is the fact that producers that maybe are not in active drought, and we do have a lot of drought still, mm -hmm. Uh, but producers that maybe are not as much in drought are, are barely out of drought, so they're still recovering in terms of their forage base, or they're recovering financially. Mm -hmm. uh, producers have had a lot of financial stress through the drought. And so for all of those reasons, um, producer, you know, older producers are looking at this maybe more as a way of figuring out when they're going to exit or cut back on the cow herd rather than rebuild it. Um, you know, so we've got just a lot of questions going forward about uh, when and uh, when we get started on this process and how fast it will accelerate. So let's kind of shift just like in, you know, the, uh, general discussions with livestock markets. Um, you know, I mentioned the drought a little bit, and like you said, there's still a lot of areas in Oklahoma that are like drought stricken, and there for a while we thought the prospects for dual purpose wheat were gonna be pretty good. What are those prospects looking like now, and how is that impacting the markets? You know, what I'm getting from producers now is it's spotty. There are a few places where some wheat uh, is getting planted and in some cases coming up nicely, I think in some areas, but all in all, I would say we're probably still struggling to get wheat planted, to get it up. Um, I think all in all, we're probably gonna be a little bit behind or short on the amount of wheat pasture that we have the potential to get into before the end of the year. And how's that gonna impact in prices? Well, you know, if we had wheat pasture prospects that looked a little better, it would certainly be adding another component of demand to our feeder cattle markets. Now, they're a little bit lower in the last couple of weeks, but most of that's due to external market volatility and some of the global things that have been happening. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit of seasonal pressure on these calves as well. Um, and so, you know, maybe the lack of wheat pasture is playing into that a little bit. Um, but, on, you know, honestly, we haven't seen a lot of impact on, on the markets at this point in time. Alrighty, thanks, Daryl. Dr. Daryl Peel, Livestock Marketing Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.